I would like to begin by acknowledging that we gather today in Port Townsend on the ancestral homelands of the Sklalem, Suquamish, Makah, Chimicum, and Twana Skokomish nations, as well as nations who met and traded in this area. Native peoples have cared for these lands from time immemorial and continue to do so today. Please join me in expressing our deepest respect and gratitude. Welcome everyone to the artist talk for Earth, Water, Sky. Paintings by Hart James, photographs by Paul Shapiro. Currently showing at Jeanette's Best Gallery through June 6th, 2022. My name is Kathleen Garrett. I'm the exhibits director at Northwind Art. And it's my pleasure to say hello to all of you, including Hart James and Paul Shapiro, who I'll be introducing in more depth shortly. We'll run a short video walkthrough of the exhibit while I introduce Hart and Paul. Then we'll have a conversation with these artists. I'll start with some questions and we'll invite you to add your own questions towards the end of the program. So I will now share the screen. And run our video. and tell you a little bit about Hart and Paul. Hart James studied at the Art Institute of Chicago, the San Francisco Art Institute with Ann Truitt, Verda Burdich, and Ed Paschke, and at Northwestern in art history and biology. She has attended artist residencies across the country, including Oxbow, Morris Gray's Foundation, and Seaside. In 2017-18, Hart was awarded a fellowship to attend Vermont Studio Residency. Paul Shapiro uses multiple images to frame a 180 degree view, much like the eye can see. He is passionate about exploring the natural world and pays particular attention to scale, capturing the shared connection between people and the breadth and depth of our landscapes. Paul hopes his ultra wide photographs inspire the viewer to embrace and explore an extended pictorial representation of the landscapes we inhabit. And now I will run a PowerPoint program that, huh, I am going to get to, there we are. And I'll start with questions for our artists. So uh, you will see in this PowerPoint presentation, just some installation shots to remind you of what the exhibition looks like. Big shout out to Jay Haskins, our Northwind Arts exhibit designer for um, merging these two artists work in I think a really beautiful way. So throughout this presentation, you'll see uh, installation shots of the exhibit as well as studio shots, still shots of some paintings and photographs. So Paul, what if we start with you? Why do you create the art you do in your chosen medium? What is it about photography? And I'll just continue to scroll, scroll through here. Sure. Um, well, uh, I love to be out in the natural world. So that's where my photography begins now. And I love to hike and both in the Northwest and I've been spending a lot of time in the Southwest recently. When I was a younger person, I worked at Geo Magazine in my 20s, which is kind of like a National Geographic, but it's a European German magazine, but it's all over the world now. In the United States, it lasted for about 10 years and then went out of business. The magazine was very expensive because it was really beautifully reproduced. Anyway, I learned a lot there and uh, worked with a lot of Magnum photographers. I ran the photo library. I used to see takes of all the best photographers in the world. And that was really inspiring to me. I went to film school at NYU I was kind of going in between the two. I, photography was kind of always my first love, but I was able 
to find more commerce with film and video. I opened a video studio in my 20s and 30s and wound up getting consumed with that and having a family and that kind of thing. And really it's been the last 10 years that I've come back to my true love, which is photography. I love exploring scale and nature. This photograph would show something like that. Uh, a bear or the boy in the forest one shows that as well, or the, um, the salmon fisherman and the um, cliffs photograph. Um, and that really is a passion of mine to show humans like in there, you see the very tiny salmon fisherman in, in the photograph. I think it helps make the photograph a slightly greater thing to itself. So I really enjoy doing that. And I really just enjoy being out in the, the natural world now with my camera. Thank you, Paul. How about you, Hart? Why do you paint? Why do you use paint? I, I paint uh, because as a child, I grew up on a farm and spent every hour outdoors in nature and had some experiences which I think are more attuned to uh, indigenous people and cultures that have gone before our technological times uh, where people almost into their combination of knowledge of nature and their awareness of nature combined with their intuitive gave them a added intelligence that we have for a long time not respected a intuition um, to indigenous people um, but now we're coming to to respect their knowledge and appreciate it at least some of us on some level and i think that um all my time in early childhood outdoors i grasped some of that so when I go to paint a scene, I actually take myself to that place along with the, um, the knowledge, the visual knowledge that I have throughout my childhood going to museums. I grew up in a beautiful home filled with art. Um, everything I absorb um, visually. And I've come to realize recently as one artist said, your work is so emotional that I have also experienced everything emotionally. I can go back to certain times and feel the emotion. And perhaps that emotion is connected to the intuition that I'm looking for. So I'll, the majority of my paintings have kind of a, the ones previous to this, I like to do um, the, the water ones those. I like to do water and the force and power of nature. And in these in particular, as I often do, the rocks you can kind of see through and they're dripping off the canvas, um, which not only shows as an artist shows the process, which is important for a contemporary artist to reflect process, but it shows my thought pattern of uh, the power and the spirit of rocks, just as the Shintoism of Japan understood that rocks, rocks have been here for a long time. They've experienced a lot that we're not aware of. We don't know what their capabilities are. So it's kind of looking through the history of a rock is my idea. The yin yang life and death, um, all that is, is in my thought process in those drips as well as the power of nature. The lower one, uh, I have a Chinese, Japanese art history background in particular. The lower one reminds me of the um, design of a Japanese woodblock print. Yeah, I can see that with the bold strokes and the, the kind of blocks of color, the very kind of basic representation, kind of there's a roughness to it as well. Yes, and the roughness also, I have no intention of painting um, pretty pictures. I, although I visually, I like them to be pretty, but I don't want the details because if I paid attention to the details, which I am capable of doing, or I used to be, um, I would get bogged down. And I, when I teach art, so many of my students are taking tiny little strokes and I want them to take big strokes 
to get the entire body and the entire spirit into the artwork. Um, and I kind of lost my my point. There was another point I was going to. Oh, it's it's all good. It's all relevant. Thank you, Hart. Um, Paul, when did you know you wanted to be an artist? Oh, wait, I remembered oh, it. Sorry, no, go ahead, Hart. Sorry. No, no. Um, you asked about it being messy. The Japanese um, gardener in a Japanese tea garden will go through and pick up only a few of the, a few, a stick here, a, a pine needle here, and everything else he will respect that, that nature has put it into its proper place and a beautiful place. And that's my, um, my, the way I go about painting. Yeah. So the rawness is part of that. Sorry. Not, not tidy. You're just putting it all out there. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Thank you, Hart. Okay, Paul, you're up. When did you, when um, did you know you wanted to be I an always, artist, photographer? I always photographer. had an interest in, in, in visual medium. And when I was in high school, I started playing around with Super 8 film, which was what was there in the 70s. It was laborious. We were editing with cement and the whole thing. Um, but I really enjoyed doing that. And I started doing photography in college and I was doing filmmaking as well. I went to film school at NYU where a lot of famous filmmakers had gone. It was a really great tradition there. I used to love photographing in New York. I used to love doing street photographs. We don't have the palm reader in here, but that would be an example of kind of a decisive moment type of photograph, which is a term that was coined by Henri Bresson, Cartier Bresson, the decisive moment when all things kind of come together in that moment. Um, and so I wound up making a living in a visual medium and video when it was starting to come in. But it, to be honest, it didn't really satisfy me. It was a way to make money and I needed to make a living. Uh, but I always loved photography and I kept doing it in a small way. And then really it's been the last 10 years. And I think I had like this a lot of creativity came out of me. My father died when I was about 55, which is 10 years ago. And it really spurred me on. I made like five films immediately after his death in the next three or four years. One of the ones was on Hasi at Port Townsend Sales. And then I started photographing like crazy. And when we came out to Washington, when we quit our jobs back East and came here full time in the last seven years, I just, I thought I was going to be making films, but I started photographing and I haven't turn back since and that's really what I spend most of my time doing or thinking about or editing or searching for places and that kind of thing and I've kind of expanded it now to being in the southwest and there's so many beautiful places there to photograph as well I love the contrast with here as well so that's what's in the exhibit too great thank you Paul Hart you yeah. also have a very interesting background that involves landscape architecture so you've kind of had art through throughout your life can you talk a little bit about that and when you really wanted to know you wanted to be a, a fine art painter uh, well i always wanted to be an artist but both of my parents said absolutely not and my mother was insistent that i be a doctor <laughs> which um isn't quite suitable to me um so I thought it was kind of funny. Oh, I also wanted to be a farmer, which was also not allowed. So I thought it was kind of humorous when push came to shove and I had kids and no income and I taught myself landscape design. Um, I worked at a nursery and I started my own business landscape design install. Um, so it was a union of art and farming so that was kind of amusing. Um, previous to that, I had always done art. I've done a lot of printmaking, pastels, watercolors. I did mixed media, which um, went more towards the sculptural. And then with the landscape design install, I was insisted on hand drawing all my plans um, as opposed to CAD. And I could do about I could do maybe two big ones, one big one a day, or five medium to small ones a day. So I had to be quick because everything I did had to be quick, which tran also translates into my painting. I'm a very fast painter. 
and uh, the landscape design uh, install, I do believe has affected my painting into this particular painting. Uh, I was studying Diebenkorn at the time, but I think uh, making large spaces, large swaths of hydrangeas, large swaths of one type of plant and working for large estates, that kind of making large areas of color has translated through to my painting. Um, and I did my landscape design install with the human being in mind, which isn't always the case, at least where I was living in the South, that's not how people operated. Um, and the human flow, what, what the uh, humans needed in that particular situation. So each design was pertinent to that historical home and the lines on the home. So I took in a lot of different things. And I think all that is translated into, the, into my painting. And then I got to run away and paint when I came back to the Northwest. And I've been painting ever since and loving it. Yeah. Great. great. Thank you. Thanks, Hart. Um, whenever we do talks like this, uh, we, we, we often get questions about artist technique. And I know Paul, um, I think folks would like to hear not only about how you make uh, you know, the filters you use to antique or to sepia, um, but also the kind of equipment you use. Okay. Well, I have quite a, quite a few cameras. Uh, you know, I have a basic uh, Canon 5D, which is a pretty nice high-end camera with L-series lenses. And I tend to use wide-angle lenses, or at least medium-wide, because I like to see a kind of a panoramic vision of things. That's what I'm interested in now. I don't take too many close-up type photographs. Um, the antiquing process like this is a filters that I've downloaded from various places or in Photoshop, and you, it can add a little texture. I have other ones that can, uh, that, not this one so much. Um, I don't know if you have the birds that were in there. I don't think, they, I don't know if you have those. They, were in the they have like kind of some scratches on them and that kind of thing that um, gives it an antique look. And I did a lot of antiquing during the first year of the pandemic, I live on Whidbey Island. I was kind of stuck here. And so basically I just started photographing every day to give myself something to do in my neighborhood. And I did a series kind of like not too far from home type of thing. And then I started kind of just feeling the presence of time during that period, just thinking about everything that you had so much time to think about and um, got me into antiquing those photographs. And I, I did a pretty large series. If you go to my website, there's a whole section of those. Um, and as far as the other equipment I use, um, people are shocked. Like these pictures you're showing now are actually shot with an iPhone in panoramic mode. And people kind of recoil almost sometimes when I tell them that because like iPhone, well, if you take one picture with an iPhone, it's okay. But if you use it in panoramic mode, these are eight to 10 photographs that are being tied together. And then I take them into Photoshop and en enhance them in various ways. I don't really change them, but just clarify them a bit and that kind of thing. Um, and it, it's incredible uh, what you can do with it. And I, I actually was kind of anti cell phone. So I didn't have one for a long time. And when we moved back to Washington full time, I bought one because I just I was going to be traveling a lot, and I decided and I started playing with it. And I've been doing it for the last eight years, and I've sold quite a few, and I've gotten a really good response to them. So I've really been enjoying that process very much. Do you do you use a different camera or the the iPhone for different ends? I mean, do you choose which camera to use for different subjects? Yes, yes, and sometimes I use both because I have the option I'm carrying them. And, um, and sometimes I take a wide angle shot with my Canon camera and I, I can crop it into something more like a panorama if I want to. Um, the beauty of the iPhone is I do lots of hiking and I go way out and it's, not, it's easy to carry in my pocket. So it's actually just turned into a great tool for me in that, in that way. It surprised me very much. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I enjoy it. And these are these ones are all sepia. I've done a large series of sepia, particularly in the Southwest. I kind of think it kind of fits the look of the Southwest, the hues of browns that you get there. And I've 
really just fallen in love with photographing there. Great. So Hart, you've talked about your inspirations from uh, Asian art, woodblock, um, from your background in landscape design with your broad strokes. Uh, you've talked about the indigenous inspiration behind your work. Anything more to add about your technique? Um, well, I've forgotten to, and I'm obligated to say that I'm represented by Harris Harvey Gallery in Seattle and Carr and Clark Gallery in Eugene. Okay. Um, so I did mention that I, I'm uh, intentionally steering away from detailed um, details. Mm -hmm. So my way of uh, doing that initially was to work entirely with palette knife and rag. And I was studying the abstract expressionists to try to get the motion and the movement into my work. Um, I, I also work charcoal in as I'm painting. I know how the charcoal works with the oil paint. Um, and recently I've introduced a little bit of brushwork. How, how does the charcoal interact with the oil paint? Well, when I first started doing it, one very clever man said, well, once it's mixed with the media, it turns into a pigment. And I think that's correct. So I sketch out vaguely what I'm going to do. And uh, sometimes I work directly in the wet oil. So I'm working wet on wet. The upper one here, um, I'm always studying artists and contemporary artists and artists in New York. So the upper one here reflects um, some of my study of New York artists. Okay. Well, I think there's an interesting story about this exhibit, how it came together. And I think Paul is the, is the reason. <laughs> well, I uh, actually met Hart through, we purchased one of her paintings and I don't buy paintings too often, but we were up in Smith Valley Gallery and Bo Edison and there was a beautiful painting there called The Great Beyond. I think it's kind of an amalgam of Washington and Alaska. I'm not exactly sure. It's a river scene with beautiful mountains behind it, but yet it has all that beautiful palette work that the palette knife work that Hart does. And uh, we just fell in love with it. So we bought the painting and wound up calling her and inviting her to come out to see us if she ever wanted to up on Whidbey Island out by Baby Island. And she did, and we became friends and started talking maybe about having a show sometime. We both like doing landscapes and it kind of, our colors are even have some similarities. And as we were talking about before, there's even a little bit, Hart had, has had a different life than I've had, but we both have come to this, our mediums heavily uh, a little bit later in life and have the time to do it, put it that way. And I, I, I feel a kinship, I really respect the work she's doing, I, it's, it's, it's been amazing to see the outpouring of paintings that she comes up with. I follow her on Facebook. Seems like there's three or four a week that she's making and, and people are amazed by what she's doing and her career is growing in leaps and bounds and I'm really excited for her. Um, so Thank anyway, you. it's just been a pleasure to be able to show with her and to help make it happen. And we talked to you and you were so kind as to have us. And I find, I, I just adding to that, I, I do find a lot of inspiration in, in other artists. And as I've been telling you, I've made a really good friend. Uh, we, we just bought a place in Santa Fe and we just spent four or five months there. And our, our neighbor where we were staying in a VRBO is named Doug Atwell. He's, look him up, he's awesome. He does New Mexico landscapes and also garden paintings. He's also uh, designed 60 houses there. He's 88 years old and he paints four hours every morning and he has this beautiful smile on his face and he's incredibly generous of spirit. And it just makes you think how great creativity is. And I just hope and pray that I can get to that age and still be creating and giving in that way because it makes me feel good and I hope it makes others as well. That's wonderful. Thank you, Paul. Um, I just have one last question before we throw it off open 
throw, open up the floor to questions from our audience. Um, and it's a general one. So so maybe Hart, we start, start with you uh, however you wanna answer this. I just wanna go back to the title of the exhibit, which is Earth, Water, Sky. And wow, it's elemental and we see it uh, in, in your work, in Paul's work, you know, layered throughout most of these works. Um, can you just talk however way you'd like about those three elements and their inspiration and how you, how you bring them together in your paintings, anything you wanna say about earth, water, sky? Uh, well, it's all nature, <laughs> which is my obsession, which I feel on the inside. Um, I, I feel it spiritually. Uh, when I was in Vermont at the residency, a New York artist asked me where the people were. And uh, it kind of shocked me. But in, in New York, of course, they, they're more figurative. There's more people. And in the Northwest, the artists and, and the people in general are um, here and loving the geography and that's why we're here. And as artists, that's what we're going to do. So you have the Northwest School and they're all about nature and they're all about the philosophy of uh, the Chinese and the Japanese. It's all incorporated into the painting. And I guess that's it. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely put you firmly in that tradition, Hart. I, I really consider your work, you know, what I know about the, the Northwest School, which wasn't ever really a school, but um, you're spot on with all those influences and the way that this region has a profound effect on its artists. And I think with what Paul was saying before, you moved here seven years ago and Paul, you just decided to focus on photography. And, and I, I, I'm tempted to say that has a lot to do with this region and of course the, the Southwest as well, but also just nature. So can you talk yes. about earth, water and sky for you? Yeah, well, the, I, I revere the natural world very much very much so and i love it and it's what makes me feel the best in the world is to be out in it and uh, i think the earth water sky came from something that was that hard had done i can't remember it was on your website Hart. uh was one of your categories or i can't remember i don't remember either so i think we took it from that in any case and then for me well it's all earth and here it's the water in the northwest and in the southwest the sky is the ocean I mean, the sky is so big there. The horizon is so deep. It's like, it's, it, there are actually two very kind of opposite places physically, but equally beautiful. And I'm kind of spending my time in both and, and kind of living a dream with it. It's very dreamy to me to be able to be out in, in those landscapes and photograph. And I, I just love it to death. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see if anyone in our audience has questions. You can type it into the chat or you can turn your video on and raise your hand, turn your audio on as well. Don't be shy. It'd be great to have some other questions. And anything Paul and Hart wanna add or ask of each other or anything else we welcome. Anybody? <laughs> Don't be shy. This is where Jim needs to have his posed question already ready. <laughs> Jim, he did have a question, but but Paul answered it already. Go ahead, Jim. You want to ask it again? Well, I, I was just curious about about a lot of his photographs had man-made objects in them, and uh, or but, people, or 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 people but, for scale, right? But he mentioned that that he does that for scale on purpose, and yes. Well, the first one I did like that, most of the photographs in the show are in the last year or two. The one, I don't know if you have that one of the boy in the forest. You, you did have it. Uh, you yeah, it's in the show, but yeah, we don't but have it. Of, well, you guys saw that it was going by. It was very, very tiny. My son was two years old and I saw a spot of light in the Redwood Forest. And I just said, stay put. And I ran up the hill and took the photograph. And it's one of the better photographs I think I've taken in my life, even though it was a, a long time ago. And it kind of, I hadn't preconceived that. But something about that sparked an interest in that. So like you see that with the bear and Tofino, or you see that with the salmon fisherman. And it, I, I think it, for me, it's my little mark. It's the, kind of the way I like to shoot. I, I do shoot landscapes, obviously, without humans and animals in it. But, some, but I really do like it if I can get one in the right place. Great. 
Okay, we do have some questions in the chat. The first one is, Paul, have you considered framing your photographs? And, and you and I had this conversation, so I'm, yeah. I'm thrilled this, this question was asked. Uh, I do frame them um, often, and most of the shows I've had before I have framed. I didn't in this one because I've been, um, I'm on the Whidbey, South Whidbey Art Working Artists Tour in the summer. And I was selling all of them unframed. <laughs> and the frames cost a lot, especially on my panoramas. So I just decided with this show to go with Magnetax and put them up. And I do kind of like being able to look at them directly without glass in between. I know in some ways it's a little more professional to have it framed, but I, I, I do like it this way, so. Okay, second question in the chat, Paul. What is the name of your 88 year old friend who paints every day? Maybe spell it out for us. It's Douglas Atwill, A-T-W-I-L-L. -L. And he has a beautiful website with New Mexican landscapes and also with uh, gardens. He's a master gardener as well. Thank you. And the third question is, Fred has a question too. So unmute yourself, Fred, and ask your question. Okay, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, doing this talk. It's been uh, really fun. Uh, I really like the show. Uh, Hart, in particular, I'm a big fan of your work and have been for a while. Oh, thank um, you. And uh, I guess one thing I saw uh, in this show, uh, Hart, was the, uh, a little bit of an echo of Emily Carr. And I'm wondering if you agree or disagree. And uh, if you, you would comment at all a little bit on that. Well, of course, I um, love her work, but I actually wasn't that familiar with her work. And John Cole, I wasn't that familiar with his work. But people keep saying, you look, your paintings look like John Cole, or your paintings remind me of Emily Carr. Finally, I asked somebody, and they said it was this, the energy and the spirit that I put into them. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, that's really cool and a wonderful compliment. Thank you. And I, I've always said your painting has an immediacy about it. You just you just feel thrown into that landscape, you know, not, you know, violently or anything, but just you feel really present. And I think that's in John Cole's work and uh, Emily Carr's really good observation, Fred. Yes, thank you. OK, there's no more questions in the chat. We wonder if anybody else has any other questions. I just want to thank you. You've done a great job and yes. you've helped put together an exhibit that I feel proud of. And, and you've been so professional in how you work. And I really, really enjoyed working with you. Thank you. Well, it's been great. And thank you for everyone for coming. Yeah. Thank you, Fred. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. It's been it's been a delight. It's not over. We uh Oh, we've got a, a chat comment. I agree. And what you say about your technique is also reminiscent of Emily Carr. I just got finished reading hundreds and thousands dialing in from Victoria, BC. Oh, oh. great. <laughs> Have to look great. for it. And thank you. The work is wonderful. Can't wait to see it in person. Tim and Leslie. Oh, good. Great. Yeah, the show is up through early June, folks. So Weather's getting better. We're open Thursday through Monday, noon to five. We'll hope to see you all there and more. And just want to thank Paul and Hart very much for taking the time to talk about all manner of technique and inspiration. Um, another comment, thank you. Really enjoyed this and also seeing it live. Great. Okay, any last final words from anyone? Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. Really appreciate everyone. Yeah, likewise. Thank you, everybody. Take good care. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. <laughs>